The U.S. redirected its aircraft carrier to the waters near the DPRK, and the DPRK conducted another missile test. Where is the Korean Peninsula situation heading? A military parade marked the 105th anniversary of the birth of the country's founder, Kim Il-sung. What will the DPRK's next move be as the 85th anniversary of the founding of the Korean People's Army approaches? And what implications will it have? With all options on the table, will the U.S. make a preemptive strike against the DPRK? U.S. Vice President Mike Pence warned Pyongyang not to test the resolve of President Donald Trump. We're going to give our soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines and coast guard the resources you need and deserve to accomplish the mission you are given and come home safe. It's a promise from the commander in chief. I'll react if the DPRK conducts a new round of nuclear testing. To ensure peace and stability, denuclearization may be the only solution. We call on all parties to refrain from provoking and threatening each other, whether in words or actions, and not let the situation get to an irreversible and unmanageable stage. Meanwhile, we remain open to any positive suggestions from all sides. The format of the meeting can be flexible. China is willing to support talks in all forms. What are the ongoing challenges to the process? Well, tensions have been escalating on the Korean Peninsula in the past week. On Monday, in his visit to South Korea, U.S. Vice President Mike Pence warned Pyongyang not to the resolve of President Donald Trump. In face of this already dangerous state of affairs, observers are trying to assess the situation and come up with some way to successfully manage a peaceful outcome. To discuss the many issues related to this, I'm happy to be joined in the studio by Mr. Yang Xiyu, Senior Research Fellow at China Institute of International Studies, and Mr. Malik Ayub Sambal, a Pakistani journalist and senior analyst at the DPRK. We'll also be talking to Professor Vladimir Kazan at Russian Academy of Military Sciences in Moscow via telephone. That is our topic. This is Dialogue. I'm Lee Chouette, sitting in for Yang Ray. All right, the missile launches kind of had the region, the world on edge. The most recent one failed, yes, but it still rattled nerves. What is the country's missile capability now, Mr. Yang? How real is the threat to the world? Well, according to the record of the uh, series of missiles uh, tests, uh, I think uh, the level of the missile developed uh, remain at the poor level, pretty low, uh, with uh, characteristics of uh, unreliable, unstable uh, qualities. For example, uh, last year they tested the uh, H Musudan uh, missile that was uh, mid uh, middle range, mm -hmm. and they tested uh, eight times. Only one time was successful, and the one successful uh, test was not the last one among the eight, but in the middle. And after the successful test, they repeated, and the failure and the failure. And uh, the latest uh, uh, test you mentioned was failed. And the, previ the, the previous one, uh, 10, uh, 11 days uh, earlier, also failed. So basically, uh, in terms of the short-term missiles, uh, North Korea uh, does command a, a high-qualified missile. But in terms of middle range, quite poor. And in terms of ICBM, mm -hmm. yet to be developed. But the real concern, I suppose, for the United States is the parade over the weekend and what people spotted in that parade. Observers say that they saw something that could be a long-range ballistic missile, canisters that large enough to house missiles capable of hitting continental U.S. Uh, you're an expert on this, Mr. Sumble. Do you think those missiles are real? What do we know about the country's strike capability for sure? I don't think so, that the North Korea missiles uh, are a real threat for anyone, especially in the Asia Pacific and also for the United States and its allies. But this is some sort of the, an excuse of the United States to come into this region at this time. Uh, when we can see that uh, they are uh, as compared when uh, the U.S. installment into the uh, Seoul about uh, this uh, the third deployment. So when, when we can see and when we can compare, I think that the, it's not much threat as compared to the third, uh, as compared to the third, because the Russia and the China has the very severe reservations about these uh, installments into the uh, South Korea for the civilians. So I don't think so that the North Korea has some sort of the real threat in the Asia Pacific. So you don't think the North Korea is pretty close to get a warhead on CBM. You agree with that, Mr. Young? Uh, yes. Uh, they, uh, uh, let me put it by this way. They have determined to command the ICBM, reliable, deliverable uh, ICBM, 
However, uh, they haven't got a real test, especially a successful test, no. Although they have got several uh, satellite launch by rocket, uh, but the rocket uh, uh, launching is uh, different from the ICBM launching, simply because of the, uh, the former uh, is a lack of the re-entry phase. Uh, so but how uh, possible is it for the DPRK to have a nuclear weapon that can reach the United States, which is making the U.S. considering a preemptive strike? Well, uh, at least up today, nobody, even President Trump, doesn't believe DPRK can deliver a nuclear bomb onto the continent of the United States. Okay. Uh, neither the States or the, nor the uh, uh, Hawaii Islands, no. Mm -hmm. Uh, so basically, uh, at the most, they can say, oh, that was a potential stress. But if they say they want to remove North Korean stress, that stress U.S. continent, that's an excuse. Okay. Now, we have Professor Vladimir Kazin from Russia Academy of Military Sciences joining us from Moscow. Thank you for joining us, sir. Now, Russia hopes the United States will not use force unilaterally against the DPRK. And Russian Foreign Minister Sergey Lavrov said this on Monday. How do you evaluate Russia's performance on the Korean Peninsula situation so far? I think that uh, nuclear exchanges uh, using, by using nuclear weapons by both sides North, by North Korea and the United States is impossible. But uh, at the same time, I believe that the United States can use conventional weapons, uh, long-range, pinpoint accuracy, conventional weapons against uh, certain installations in the North Korea. So that's why, because this threat is imminent, I mean, the country's concern, uh, Beijing, the People's Republic of China, the Russian Federation should uh, urge key players in, in this uh, crisis, namely North Korea and the United States of America, to exercise the restraint and uh, display patience and to resort to direct talks, but not to exchange uh, uh, some political statements that they uh, are ready to use uh, uh, formidable power, as they used to, uh, to, to, to say. But would it, help, so, yeah. would it be helpful for Russia to get involved in the picture? Yes, uh, Russia should also be involved, but in, uh, in a political sense of view. In political sense, I mean, through negotiations. And I think that uh, if uh, our respective uh, presidents, uh, the president of the PRC and the president of the Russian Federation, could approach uh, the leaders of uh, North Korea and the United States even by urgent telephone calls and urge them to, to, to stay calm and to not to uh, hold in tension, that would be uh, the most uh, uh, welcomed uh, scenario and the most welcomed uh, uh, step forward in the right direction. And how does Russia feel about the current U.S.-Russia relationship? Because Donald Trump is saying it's at an all-time low after what happened. What does Russia think about this? Is it possible for Russia to work with U.S. on this Korean Peninsula issue? Yes, I think that uh, we have to try even a small step forward in this direction. Though uh, we have a lot of problems uh, with the United States of America. Suffice uh, to say, that in the uh, arms control domain, we are still having 16, one, six, 16 unresolved issues with Washington. Uh, they are uh, very alarming. And uh, unfortunately, unlike in the uh, first stage of the Cold War, uh, we are still having with Washington a uh, full uh, deadlock, full uh, cul-de-sac. Uh, no movement in terms of resolving uh, key arms control issues. But nevertheless, uh, we should uh, talk to them directly mm -hmm. and not to exercise military might in the vicinity of the uh, Korean People's Democratic Republic mm -hmm. because it irritates uh, Pyongyang. It is obvious. Right. Could you? Many thanks, uh, Professor Vladimir Kazan, joining us on the phone. My, my pleasure. Thank you.
Is it helpful to get Russia involved, Mr. Yang? How much of a role can Russia play? Uh, basically, uh, basically, a political role in this uh, whole course of the denuclearization in peaceful manner. Uh, during the uh, past uh, six party talks process, a Russian delegation played a very uh, important and uh, professional role mm -hmm. uh, in f forging uh, uh, consensus and agreement, uh, joint statement among parties. And especially China and Russian uh, delegation uh, uh, had a very good uh, coordination and cooperation in the very sophisticated negotiations of all the six party talks. And the under the current uh, situation, uh, by the same token, <coughs> both Russia and China strongly oppose any efforts by North Korea towards the nuclearization. But uh, at the same time, the two countries also strongly oppose any actions, provocative actions from uh, uh, any of the parties that will contribute negatively uh, to the peace and stability because both of the countries uh, hate to see any kind of uh, conflicts and instabilities in this very vital region. And how do you see this? Will the dynamics between Russia and U.S. play into this? Of course, uh, because uh, Russia is, uh, I think, the major stakeholder into the, this DPRK uh, issue, and uh, of course they have to be taken into confidence. And uh, as the Professor Vladimir was telling, that uh, this could be help into the diplomatic uh, dialogue mm -hmm. and for the peaceful uh, denuclearization and uh, overall uh, the peaceful manners to solve this uh, issue, rather than to have to any intervention against uh, North Korea or from the North Korea to any other um, the, uh, South Korea, Japan. Because uh, no one can, uh, no one can uh, accept uh, the c confrontation mm -hmm. and uh, some tension in the region. And North Korea is still expected to launch that underground nuclear test. But the urgent question is, Mr. Young, how far along is DPRK's nuclear program now at this stage? Well, uh, firstly, uh, compared with their poor uh, development of a missile program, mm -hmm. Uh, their nuclear program uh, is going uh, pretty successful. Up to now, uh, to my knowledge, they have manipulated the uh, nuclear bomb, but made by uh, plutonium. And uh, now they are preparing a bigger bomb test. I'm very worried the possible test was a, will be a possible hydrogen bomb. If that is the case, that will be produced natural disasters in that mountain area. Uh, Will it affect China? Of course, because the site is just uh, uh, close, uh, it's very close to China. The, the direct uh, distance uh, about one kilometer, than one kilometer between the sites and uh, one Chinese uh, uh, big city there. So China is very concerned by two, abs uh, 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 two aspects. Uh, number one, the further nuclear tests will make the security situation on the peninsula in the further complicated. Mm -hmm. And the secondly, that is China's solely uh, concern, say, such a test will trigger, possibly trigger a huge earthquake that will trigger uh, the, uh, the secondary natural disasters in that region that will uh, uh, strike uh, peoples uh, across the border, uh, beside uh, both of the uh, both sides of the borders. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, they are going to do that, but they have to calculate the consequences, mm -hmm. both politically and naturally. Politically, China, Russia, U.S., and the international community will f certainly put further sanctions and pressures uh, on North Korea's uh, new tests. On the natural uh, side. They have to concern because their people there and our people there, mm -hmm. they have to be responsible for the lives and the assets of the two peoples uh, in that area. So basically, I think uh, they have determined to develop further the, the nuclear uh, bombs. Uh, but uh, the more and more restraints and the possible consequences waiting ahead. All right, hold your thoughts. Let's take a short break on dialogue. We'll be mm -hmm. right back for more discussion. Stay with us. Welcome back to Dialogue. So earlier before the break, we were talking about the nuclear program development in DPRK. Is there any way to stop that? Is there anything that we can do to deter them from doing it? Uh, of course, uh, again, uh, I will say that uh, that is the diplomatic dialogue that could, pre uh, that could prevent uh, North Korea to do any kind of the untoward incident 
like because uh, some American uh, scientists uh, they have uh, some sort of the reports and uh, they have uh, uh, exposed that the nuclear uh, the South uh, the, the North Korea nuclear uh, program mm -hmm. is fastly growing uh, as the outer world predicted so might be uh, the United States should not have to take uh, North Korea like Syria or Afghanistan because they bombed uh, Syria then Afghanistan and then uh, they are going to narrate connect this that after this after this and then North Korea so I think that this threat uh, could be or any uh, preemptive uh, move from both sides could lead towards a major tension what do you think the DPRK would respond once there was a preemptive strike from the US well uh, politically they have set up a doctrine say uh, tougher reaction against or respond to tough action say if US uh, uh, launch the strike, uh, preemptive strike, uh, they will uh, make a stronger response by using the nuclear bomb. Uh, if, uh, as I said, they have no way to deliver the bomb onto the U.S., but uh, they have fully uh, capability to use of them against their brother people, the South Korean people. They even uh, can deliver, try to deliver to onto Japan. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, any kind of uh, uh, pre, uh, the so-called preemptive, preemptive military strike or any uh, form of uh, any format of the military actions by unilateral uh, way uh, will trigger a series of consequences and problems and the troubles for this region. But for the U.S., what's their red line? What will make them say, well, okay? A preemptive strike is absolutely necessary. I think uh, that uh, U.S. is going to be on both sides, on the diplomatic sides and on the back end. You can see that the from White House, they are saying that uh, they will not go towards any kind of the preemptive strike like this. But on the front, like Mike Pence, he is saying that uh, yesterday it was a big headline into the, all the media mm -hmm. that uh, the era of the strategical patience is over. Mm -hmm. So I think that this is some sort of the uh, diplomatic tests to pressurize the North Korea. But I think that personally, I think that uh, the United States is not in a position to take any preemptive strikes against the DPRK at this stage. Do you believe there's still room for negotiation? Of course, they will lead towards this because uh, uh, the South Korea new regime, which is going to become, I think that they are not, uh, they, are, they might be not in uh, this position because thus if you can compare the collateral damage in case of the, any kind of the tensions, it will be more high in South Korea and Japan rather than the North Korea. But remember, given the unpredictability of both U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korea leader Kim Jong-un, you know, will Donald Trump's aggressive DPRK increase the likelihood of a conflict? Well, uh, with the newly made policy free work announced by uh, Vice President uh, Pence's visit in South Korea, uh, they labeled the new uh, policy framework as a maximum uh, pressures and engagement. Say uh, they will make a full use of uh, measure, uh, pressure means onto North Korea. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, they are probably going to have uh, any kind of talks engagement with North Korea, even including the presidential uh, sandwich between uh, Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un. Okay. If Kim Jong-un uh, indicate that uh, he is sincere to return to the denuclearization uh, goal. So basically, I think on one hand, uh, we will witness uh, increasing uh, uh, troubles and uh, contradictions between uh, DPRK and the United States because the increasing pressures, say maximum pressures. But uh, meanwhile, uh, the negotiation uh, wi uh, window of the opportunity for negotiation remain open, even bigger than before, with the new policy, with the coordination and cooperation between China and U.S. on this uh, uh, Korean Peninsula issue. Now, U.S. officials keep saying all options are on the table, but is regime change an option for them too? Will the U.S. try to remove Kim from power like what they did in Libya? Um, in Iraq and what they're trying to do in Syria. What do you think? Of course, the history of the United States to change the regime is not peaceful. So I think that it's not possible. That option is out of, uh, out of question. So it's not possible to change the regime. Because how is it possible? Because ever, whenever the regime is changed, uh, the U.S. has changed the regime by its own style. 
and that is not peaceful actually. Do you agree, Mr. Young? Well, uh, the latest development is uh, Pence and his uh, team members uh, announced a new policy say uh, the U.S., uh, uh, including President Donald Trump, uh, stated that uh, U.S. will not uh, uh, set the regime change as a policy goal. And uh, at least uh, orally, uh, it's a positive development. And also, they said uh, uh, exclude the probability of may uh, of using military means. They say uh, use all uh, use all measures short of military means. Mm -hmm. So it's a good word. But the key question is, you said no regime change. But how let or persuade North Korea to believe that? And we do want. Uh, we do want a uh, denuclearization, but if we really want to denuclearize North Korea in peaceful manner, first thing first is we need to make or let North Korea in confidence to give up nuclear weapon. Say even without a nuclear weapon, they will be safer rather than more unsecured. They will not follow the fate of Saddam Hussein or uh, what happened in Libya or Syria. If they are confident about that. I think the peaceful solution to the nuclear uh, issue will, will be hopeful or hopeless. Now, when weighing the possibility of a preemptive strike, what went into the consideration? How worried about how are how worried are they about possible retaliation? Because you mentioned it earlier, this is a very different situation from Syria. The DPRK is able to reach uh, their agent allies. It's able to reach U.S. military assets stationed there. If the DPRK decides to pull the trigger, Osan Air Base will be the first target, which is just 48 miles away. Of course, in any kind of the preemptive attempts from the both sides, uh, uh, the, the major targets will be the, I think that the South Korea or might be the most neighboring countries, the U.S. allies. But as I again mentioned here, that this is not the first time that the U.S. and DPRK is going at this heights of tension. In 1994, the tension was even more than this. And then the U.S. has to be stepped back. So I think that the U.S. will be stepped back. And after these military exercises, I hope that the U.S. Uh, this uh, the, uh, these aircraft carrier will, will go back from where it from where it came. What do you think of this? Will the U.S. step back? Will the tension die down eventually? Well, the, the stories in 1994 uh, was a different, a little bit different uh, from the one uh, the, the current situation now. Uh, however, uh, U.S. and uh, South Korea should draw a lesson from the crisis in 1994 and the crisis today. Uh, say the more nuclear, uh, the more military drills, the, the more military pressures on North Korea, what will be the result? Cephas towards denuclearization rather than the denuclearization. So actually, all military efforts made by US and ROK actually, actually was counterproductive rather than productive. Uh, produce negative results, produce the momentum towards the direction they hate to see. Okay. So we, uh, US, RK, and all of the international community should rethink what we have done and uh, replan what we should be, uh, be like and we, what, what we should do for the next. Now, Mike Pence just left South Korea and it's arriving at Tokyo. What do you think can America's ally do in this play? I mean, will we see coordinated response among U.S., Japan, and South Korea, a trilateral coordinated response? Of course, they are already in this trilateral, uh, trilateral talk and trilateral uh, conversation on North Korea because uh, this special visit of uh, Mike Pence is actually planned ahead of this, uh, after this uh, the North Korea tension that is created in this, this region. And uh, in Japan, also he has the same talk about this, uh, the DPRK issue. But it's also very difficult in the past to get, you, to get South Korea and Japan cooperate on security matters, Mr. Yang. Uh, yes, because of the uh, historical uh, reason and uh, the sum of current political reasons, it's very sensitive, not only difficult, but sensitive to uh, even talk about uh, uh, Japan, uh, ROK, political and security uh, cooperation against North Korea. It's quite a sensitive inside uh, ROK. Of course, no sensitivity in Japan, but uh, in South Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the trilateral military cooperation uh, will be limited. However, 
the U.S. ROK and the U.S. Japan bilateral in the, uh, the the parallel bilateral relation, uh, bilateral cooperation, military cooperation against the PRK uh, will be increased uh, through the Pan's visit uh, to both of the countries. Now, China's role in it. You hear Donald Trump saying China, China, China all the time. He's basically calling this a Chinese problem located in North Korea. You agree? No, actually, uh, so many politicians have talked about so long time about China's responsibility or uh, North Korea issue is China's problem. The, their logic can be summarized uh, as this. Because China is the biggest uh, provider of assistance to North Korea, so if China cut off completely the assistance, then the nuclear issue uh, will be solved. Such a logic is groundless. Let's imagine even China completely stop all economic assistances, North Korean authority will never ever surrender. Not only North Korea, any sovereign country cannot do that, only by cut off economic assistance. But we will trigger a series of problems and a crisis on humanitarian area. Uh, so basically, China will not uh, will never follow U.S. way, say, for shooting one trouble by making more troubles. We cannot do that way. And we have to maintain a uh, reasonable uh, uh, level of the sentences. Meanwhile, we should input more efforts for the uh, diplomatic and the economic pressures. And final words from you, Mr. Sambal. Your thoughts on how China should handle the situation? Of course, uh, China will not afford uh, some sort of the tensions near its neighborhood, and uh, it is uh, not for any country, because uh, uh, those countries who have the tension uh, near their borders, they will have some problems, like another problem. So China's stance is uh, uh, absolutely right, and uh, as Donald Trump is saying, China, China all the time. So I think that uh, China has the full cooperation. China is. Uh, have a have a full support uh, for the uh, U.S. and uh, the Russia and other other alliance uh, to denuclearization, but it should be peaceful manner. All right, many thanks to you both, Mr. Yang and Mr. Sumble, joining us in Beijing Studio, and that is this edition for Dialogue. Thank you so much for your company. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.